Hello. Hello. Nice to see you again. Yes. How Happy Christmas. Yeah, Christmas Eve day, right? Yes, but in Brazil, it's, uh, we celebrate the 24th. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I believe in Switzerland and Hungary, there's, there's lots of countries where they celebrate on the 24th. So this is Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. So I have the best of both, 24th and 25th. Ah, nice. You got two. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I have I two. I'm quickly going to change something in my settings because my phone keeps doing um, fading. So I'm still here, but I'll quickly do something. Okay. So Edson is doing something to his settings, changing. Uh, Feliz Natal, gente. Que Natal estranho. Oh, ele sumiu. <laughs> Vamos ver o que, que ele fez. Let's check what he's... When to change his settings... Hello, welcome hello, friends, hello. welcome. Did that hello. work? Did you change? I, I hope so. Okay. I hope that it works. <laughs> oh, great. So welcome everyone to this conversation with uh, this incredible friend, Edson Williams. Some of you may know him, some may not. I met him uh, in uh, Wednesday dinners which a friend of mine, Christian, introduced us. And, uh, but before we, Edson is going to tell us about Wednesday dinner. But before that, Edson, tell me something about you, about your background. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> there's a background. Um, <clears throat> when you say background, how far back? How far what, back? And what, no. what back, kind of background are we talking about? I think way back, because it's so incredible. You came from, you were brought up in one place, and then you moved to the Netherlands, yeah. and now you're in the UK. So, okay. so way back, way back. Way okay. back. So uh, we're from neighboring countries. You're from Brazil. I'm from yes. Suriname. So we that little country that sits on top of uh, Brazil. Um, so that's where I was born. And then we moved to the Netherlands, and I was raised there um, in about 14 years ago, I think. Uh, 14 years ago, I, I moved to the UK. And then I lived in London, where we met at the Wednesday dinners. Um, yeah, so that, that's been my little travel journey uh, from South America to the Netherlands to the UK. Um, yeah, and, 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 and here I am, right? I had a Dutch education, and, and, and I do all kinds of jobs. And here we are today. And uh, so Wednesday dinners, that's where I met you, mm -hmm. in Spitfield Markets. Yeah. And what I love about that was that it was happening every single Wednesday, and it was something that you did in gratitude, like, uh, so could I, tell me about that story. How did it start it? How did it start? So Wednesday dinner was actually a wake up call for me because it was, I think the economical, economic crisis had just hit and uh, my business just went under, right? I, I had hit rock bottom with, with, my, with, my, my, with my business. Basically I owed more money then there was money coming in um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that didn't look good um, and it didn't feel good and I was really worried about money uh, and I'll, I'll tell the brief story 
um, at that, that point of my uh, my life, uh, so business wasn't good. Finances were rock rock bottom, and um, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but what business were you doing at the time? Ah, yes, of course. Um, so I was uh, running a, a photographic agency representing photographers and illustrators. Um, so that, that was my bread and butter at the time. Okay. Right? Um, and yeah, I was literally counting my change, uh, going to the shop uh, for, for food. And it was this homeless couple um, that sat in my street. And one day I went to grocery shopping and normally I would always just give them a pound, give them two pounds, uh, give them my change. And in, I still had a little change in my pocket and I didn't give it to them because I had the story in my head that I had this huge debt and even though they didn't have anything, um, having nothing is better than having minus, which was my situation. And then when I got home, I felt so small. Oh. I felt so small. And because I was comparing myself to these homeless people. And what I realized is that I was looking at everything the wrong way around. I was looking at what I didn't have versus looking at what I did have. And my creativity, my resources, a roof above my head, even though I didn't know how I was going to pay rent uh, that month. But, and I just woke up to the resources that I had available to me. And from there, I started to focus on giving. Uh, so that's where Wednesday dinner came in. Oh. I've always wanted to do these dinners, but now I thought, okay, as, as you might have uh, might remember, is where I didn't accept anybody to bring anything. So the only thing you could bring was alcohol because I don't, I don't drink. So, but other than that, no contributions were welcome because I had a little budget and I was going to cook for, well, you've been there 10 to 12 people every Wednesday and I did that for almost two years consecutively. Um, and it was just to prove to myself that the giving that's 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 the wealth, right? It's like you're as rich as what you can give rather than as rich as measured in what, what I have um, or what I can keep. So, yeah, so that's where the Wednesday dinners came from. Like, okay, I'm going to create that, bring people together, get people to know new people and just love and fun. And so that's where we met. Yes. And I was very um, striked by how generous you were and uh, how like you, you irradiated love. Everyone wants to go to the Wednesday dinner, everyone wants, wants to meet Edson. And what I loved is that that spread like was always different people. Uh, but okay, so from that experience then, so it's about, what is that about? It's about when we hit bottom line, but it's still, we didn't, it's still we have resources, it's still we have so much to, so it's like a, it's a changing, it's a swap, a way of thinking, basically. Oh. You nailed it, that's it. It's, 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 <clears throat> it is realizing that um, rock bottom, what, what, what we think is rock bottom, is not rock bottom. And that's, and that's, and that's oh, what I look okay. like. Okay, so what we think is... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like great. We, we, so... We, we, it's, it's like when you, when you go into the sea, right? And we, like we, we have a mental picture of how deep the sea can be. And if you know that there's points of the ocean that are kilometers deep, right? It's, it's that. It's like going into the abyss and it's like... Um, we think that we're done, but you're not. <laughs> Talk about, talking about the, the magic of human beings, we are incredible. Yeah. Right? We are incredible. So it's, it's just about keep stretching ourselves. Stretch, 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 and then see what else can I do. 
Okay. What else can I do? I did this. Okay. What else can I do? I did this. What else can I do? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So it's that exploration of of of, of being a human. Uh huh. Oh. And what did you do after that? Um, what did I do after the Wednesday dinners? Yes. You mean when I stopped with the Wednesday dinners? Yeah, like no, <laughs> career-wise. Sorry, career-wise. Oh, career-wise. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so we're talking around that same time. Um, I was leading workshops, uh, which I started in 2007. There's a backstory to that as well, obviously. Um, so what happened career-wise with my agency, uh, and it's, whether it's an energy, a karma, whatever you might, might want to call it, we landed this massive big campaign for this big fashion house. I'm not going to put names out, but that one campaign sorted out all my debt. <laughs> one <laughs> campaign? Thought. Yeah, right? Um, and yeah, just a little bit of magic, right? So the agency got its, its, its lovely little boost. Uh, I could pay off uh, all my debt and, and keep that business going. And on the side, I was also developing my, my coaching business, the Lead by Example business. Yes, Lead by Example. Uh, uh, and what was the campaign that made that big difference? Uh, well, we're on Instagram. Who cares? It, it was. It was a. It was. It was for Louis Vuitton. It was a photographic campaign, and um, yeah. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> like, okay. I know. I <laughs> who cares? What is? <laughs> <laughs> I there is lots of people that care. <laughs> oh, great! And then yeah. in the side, you're doing the coaching lead by example. Yeah, well, that that has that has that has a, a longer background story, um, starting with how I got into personal development, um, which came through my own struggles and, and, and depression, um, or depression, uh, frustration, I would say. Frust frustration, okay. Yeah, yeah. So back in 1999, that was I. I was um, so called in. It's supposed to be it was ninety nine or ninety eight. Um, it's supposed to be in my dream job, right? Uh, working in this great place and it's all it's all good. And um, and what I learned is, um, well, basically there was this this event. As a teenager, I had together with my best friend, we had this this dream that one day we'll be both successful and working and I'll be calling him and he would be picking up being in, an, in, in a different country and I will be in a different country, right? Uh, and to us that was like, wow, that's, that's so amazing, right? Then, then you're there, right? You, you're doing the thing. And yeah, I'm in my early 20s and I am calling him, where are you? Um, he was in Paris. And at the time, I was still living in the Netherlands, and I was in, in London uh, for work. And and I just had the stage of moving, like, oh, I've been here, and I've been there in the conversation because we spoken about that moment. And his brother happened to be in London, and he was stuck with something, so I was able to help his older brother out, which I felt super successful. Right, I took his brother out of crappy hotel coming into my fancy four-star hotel where uh, where I was staying I was like, yeah wow, so this is it and then straight after that there was this emptiness this emptiness of okay so this is it right done the thing I'm living that life and and now what right and oh. what else is there and I've I've always lived a really Good life. I entertain myself thoroughly, and and that was what my life was really about: like having fun, entertaining myself, exploring, okay. experiencing things, and that was really, really good. And but there was this thing that kept nagging at me, which was, yeah, so what? Right? 
I wasn't satisfied. I wasn't content and I couldn't answer the question for myself of, so what's, what's the whole meaning of all of this, right? Um, what's, what's so fun, fun about this, right? And what's so good about this and, and where is this going? <clears throat> and it became very, very frustrating because it felt very, very empty, uh, very empty and meaningless. And understanding that life was empty and meaningless um, left me very empty. I just like, I, I need to fill myself and fill myself with more adventures and entertainment um, wasn't it. And uh -huh. so I just started doing lots of personal development trainings and I learned a lot about myself, learned a lot about leadership and did very well in my career, but still the question wasn't answered. And that answer came by chance when I was introduced to Dr. Viktor Frankl. Um, oh, was... yeah, men searching for meaning. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And read Great the book. book. Who's listening, read the book, Men's Search for Meaning. Yeah. Because that's what I was looking for. I was looking for meaning. Okay, so what's life about? Um, and what I learned there is that. There is no holy grail where it's written. Uh, there's no menu that says Carol needs to do this, Edson needs to do that, you need to do this. Um, but the one thing that's clear is that we're here to be of service um, and to use whatever gift or talent you have to help, whether it's humanity or nature, but to contribute, to do something for others rather mm -hmm. than just be here consuming right just eating and um, right it's like uh, as a human being you have a choice right you can you can be here like a virus that just consumes and multiplies um, or we can be here as somebody who is a producer a creator who mm -hmm. leaves something uh, for others to step into. So, um, when that penny dropped, that's when I picked up more and more books and I got that, oh, all these guys are talking about the same thing in different ways. Ways, okay. Yeah, and, and that's when I created my first workshop. Oh, yeah. and your first workshop, was it the Life Purpose workshop? Was it the one that I attended? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that yeah. was so good. Yeah. That's, yeah, uh, that was that's so really, good. I think human beings shouldn't be walking around purple, without purpose. And yeah. when I took that workshop, I was in a very, like, uh, it was a very changing point in my life as well, because I was coming from a divorce and uh, didn't know what was going on and uh, was so beautiful to focus and just see what, uh, yeah, what the, my life purpose, what it was, what things that matter for me, what I wanted to do. Oh, great. Yeah. And, but after, now I've, you've been doing the life purpose workshop with Selena, right? Yes. So before yeah. you're when doing I by started... yourself, well, when, when I started, I started with, with, with a friend and, uh -huh. and unfortunately that didn't work out. And yeah, he didn't feel that he was in, in the right place. So then I carried on doing it by myself and I led uh, the workshop also in, in Switzerland where Selena was one of the attendees. And I believe like a year later, I spoke to her and she was like, oh, Edson, um, what do we need to do to get you to come back to Switzerland? I said, well, you stick 10 or people in a room and, and I'll come and I'll fly over and, and come and do the workshop. And, and basically that's what she started to do. Uh, so every six months I would go to Switzerland and uh, do the workshop there. And from there I created uh, a whole bunch of other workshops. Um, and having worked with Selena for, for, for so long, she, knows the workshop in and out. 
Oh, great. Right? And then she started helping me, uh, delivering the workshops. And then about a year ago, um, year or year, two years ago, I think, um, we, we made it official. Uh, and then we started to work together. Uh, we're, we're leading these workshops together. Oh, and I saw these on the website. And uh, uh, we both like that you, you and about you and Selena, we both love challenging each other and other people to grow. Selena is driven by curiosity and adds on creativity. And both believe that the revolution is found in personal and creative leadership. Tell me more about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, again, the magic of, 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 of human beings, right? Um, so the world that we live in is, is the world that uh, we are responsible for. And um, we, we do believe that each and every one of us can make a change, right? All it takes is for you as an individual to step up okay. and be present and create your thing and go out there in the world and say what you have to say and give what you have to give, right? And all that we do is providing tools and support and guidance to allow that to come out, right? We just help you to connect with that because it's inside of everybody. Okay. Everybody has yeah. something to give, right? So it's yeah. about helping people to just step up, just do it, right? Step it's, up. Mm. Yeah, stepping up. It's, it's really about um, the, the metaphor that I, I, I use is you have this dress in your room and um, you put it on and you're like, oh, this dress is too big. And what most people do is they take it off and they put it back. I need to go and get a smaller dress. And what we're talking about is, no, that is your dress. You know, just need to grow into it. Oh, that's... <laughs> That's an interesting and metaphor. And for all the aesthetic people who are thinking about their weight and their I'm figure, you know, like talking that. about growing into it, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Interesting metaphor, but I think some woman wouldn't like that. It was like, what? Growing into it? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm trying what to lose weight. What do you mean? Weight. I don't want to get fat, no, but that's not what, you know what, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? It's literally yeah. growing into yeah. it. Not growing oh. into it, but growing into yeah. it. So basically, it's nothing too big. You just have to grow into it. And yeah. Yeah. it's as big as you want it to be, I guess. That's what I'm getting. Well, yeah, exactly. And it's the same. It's, it, it's the thing. Is, it's the same with the rock bottom. Is with the ceiling. You think you hit the ceiling? Nah. But Keep going. Right? Oh, and, yeah. And it's the same with rock bottom. You think you hit rock, bo rock bottom? Nah. You can go lower if you want to. I don't recommend it. But Buddy. You, you, you can take even more than what you've already endured. Mm. But sometimes we have beliefs that keep us thinking that things yeah, are the way they are. And changing those beliefs is quite, can be quite difficult. Yes, yes. And that's, and, and what we, what we do is, is, well, first thing is, is to look at your surroundings, right? If your surroundings are affirming the disempowering belief that you have, then you might want to change your surroundings. Hmm. So friends and even family. Even family doesn't mean that you don't that you stop yeah. loving them, but you might want to hang out a bit less with certain individuals, right? Mm -hmm. You want to be with the yay sayers versus the naysayers. 
I'd like that with the yes. Say, hey, Carol, you can do that. Yeah, I believe that you can do that. What do you need? I will be, I'm there to support you. Mm -hmm. But those are the people that you need around you, right? That will not listen to you when you say, oh, I don't think I'm good enough to do that. Mm -hmm. They'll go like, yes, you can. So, it's you, uh, yes. How can, uh, how can, wow. Great, great, great work. And talking about that, like how you got to that, I don't know anything about like, do you have any inclination, any spirituality, anything like spiritual background when you're growing up? Were No, no. So spiritual background, none. Uh, completely non-religious. And the, the belief that I have to have is in, in human beings. Um, and I have a, I have a love-hate relationship with human beings, right? I remember being in my, <laughs> in my training for my neuro-linguistic program, and this was for my masters, and on stage with the, the, the trainer, and, and he asked me a truthful question, right? So how are you and human beings? I said, I hate human beings. And, and that's why I'm so invested in human beings. I don't like um, the part of human beings that I don't like is all the all the things that we see around us that we don't like. Yeah. Done by human beings. Yeah. But on the other hand, all of this magical stuff, this amazing stuff that we have around us, all these beautiful creations, is also created by human beings. So I want to give everything that I have in investing in human beings who want to create beautiful things for others or for nature. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in with that. <laughs> right? Yeah, and we're here to give and to help each other and help other people grow and leave something behind for the younger people that are coming. Um, right? Selena so and I are, are, are both parents and so we, we look at, well, we're, we're in a pandemic right now, right? Yep. and our children are growing up with this, right? And this is not going to be over tomorrow. So, and in a child's life, a year is a very, very significant amount. It has a massive impact, right? As an adult, we shake, we can shake off a year, right? Mm. But as a child, yeah. a year is very, it's... very definitive and very formal. So, with all the things that that we see around see around us, it's, it's we need to step up. We need to take responsibility for the mess that we've made, right? The, the, the analogy that I use is that we've all gone to dinner, right? We've all gone to dinner, and we partied, we ate and we just threw our dishes on the floor and our cutlery and, and, and left the food everywhere, danced on the tables, kicked everything around and then just walked out of the restaurant. And then this next generation comes in and they open the door and they go like, oh, holy cow, look at all the plastic in the ocean. Look at that. that's the oil in, 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 in the ocean, right? Why couldn't these people just tidy up behind themselves? Right? Mm. And, and that's where we need to go. Keep, we need to stop talking about, oh, the next generation, they're going to change. No, we need to pay our own bill. Yep. Right? Have to start. It, and talking about the pandemic and uh, I you've been doing something else called mobility and care which I participate which are these exercises that uh, they are wonderful so wh when and how and why did you start that uh, that's a product of the of the <laughs> of the lockdown right ah! uh, <laughs> yeah it's it's it was one of those things where okay the gyms are closed and it's something that has helped me recover 
from my knee injuries, which I have to stop calling my knee injuries because what I learned from uh, another trainer is that it's actually muscle in my glute area. Basically, uh, I'm a tight ass, right? So <laughs> my ass is too tight and it needed stretching. And through stretching, I got the freedom back in, in my running and my jumping. And um, before walking my daughter to school, I'd be in pain. And, okay. and now I'm completely pain free. And I'm hearing this uh, from other participants. And uh, my mother is, is also doing it, who is seeing a physiotherapist about also her knee and her back. And she's addicted now because it's freeing her up and it's taking the pain away. So, um, yeah, mobility, stability, core is, is all about opening up and looking at <clears throat> extending your range of motion, but to do that controlled, right? It's like, it's nice when you can do that, but yep. when you can do it in slow motion, right? That means that you have control over the movement. And when you've got control of the movement, which is the stability, it, <laughs> the stability is where the strength comes in uh, and where you start to prevent injuries, right? Some people like my daughter, for instance, she's hypermobile. So she needs strength and control very, very much because she can fold herself like this, but she can also injure herself very easily if she doesn't have the strength uh, with that uh-huh so, yeah um so yeah so it's it's a pandemic uh little thing that, that i started to do uh taking everything online so, oh actually i can also do this online oh so I, I give think... classes here in the locally um ah, we all, okay we all went online locked in our houses so that's how it started Oh, great. Yeah, I really recommend this mobility. I've been doing it and I'm loving it. Like it's parts of the bodies which I don't move or turn like great. And talking about mobility, you are always being very fit and doing... Did you not do boxing? Yeah, and kids yeah. and boxing? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. When I was still living in London, I used to coached the juniors at the Fitzroy Lodge gym, an incredible legendary gym in, in, in London. They've been around for over a century um, and they do incredible work. I just have to do a little shout out and um, they do incredible work for young boys and girls um, in well, keeping them healthy, uh, being a father, a mother uh, for them, um, feeding them, um, and, and teaching them discipline and giving them something to focus on that um, yeah, it gives them such discipline and, and, uh, and, and purpose, right? It's just something that they focus on and yeah, keeps them off the streets uh, off the street. killing each other. And I, like, I thought that was great and I heard that from when I met you because before my idea about boxing, like I never liked it because... For me, the idea that I had was just people hitting themselves and blood everywhere. And I was like, why do people do that? So that was always my idea of that sport. Why do people do that? That's weird. <laughs> yes. And then, although I did Taekwondo, I can do, but uh, yes. So when I heard about how good is for the young boys and especially and discipline, girls. And girls, yeah. Yeah. And girls and Yeah, it's and now... at the moment I'm I'm helping somebody here locally. Um his gym is closed. Um and yeah, he doesn't have anywhere to train. So we train outdoors. Uh, we've gone inside for a bit, but uh next lockdown is here, so we'll be training outside again. Um, and again, it's just about giving, right? So like, if I can help, if I can help him to keep training uh, and to have purpose and, 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 and focus in his life, of course I'm going to do it, right? Um, yeah. My my idea is that if if you can help somebody, why wouldn't you? Oh, 
Great, yes. I wish more people thought like that. <laughs> but that's it, right? It's like if you can help somebody, why wouldn't you? Yeah. And uh, now something very random. If you'd have a superpower, what would that be? Wow, if I would have a superpower. Um, wow. Well, uh, selfishly, because my daughter has asked me this, this question, and I, I was like, oh, I, I would love to be able to fly. Oh, to fly, okay. Yeah, to fly, just, just to fly, just so I can go wherever I want, whenever I want, uh, be out of communication when I want, come back, but also go places. I could go into the middle, especially now, <laughs> right? It would be amazing <laughs> if you could fly, right? Yeah, I would go and connect with, um, no, with all, the, all the people that I love, all my friends uh, from different places. Uh, some of them are watching us here on, on, online. Uh, hi, Suzanne, I would definitely come and see you, right? It's, it's um, yeah, I saw Gabriel, I think, as well. So, yeah, um, I would come over and fly over myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, l I wonder how long would it be to fly to Brazil? Like, it would take you a while, maybe, but it depends on uh, how you um, have your superpower. Maybe you have a turbo flight. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it would be fast. So, Carol, can I ask you a question? Okay, yes. So, um, as a creative, right, and you're, you're, you're an artist, um, what do you see as your role just in life? My role in life, um, I see is like to inspire others to also create, because I believe everyone is create. We all create as we all creative people, and but I hear so many times from adults, from even younger, not children, because they're full of imagination, creativity. But like, oh, I can't, I'm not the creative type. Oh, I'm. And yet they do amazing creations with their homes, with their food, with their... So creativity is everywhere. It's so, it's, yeah. So I think it's, that's it, is to inspire others to create and do what they can do. Cool, cool. Is, is that also part of your life purpose? It's also part of my life purpose, yes. Yeah, yep, cool. it is. <laughs> <laughs> just checking <laughs> just. and uh, so we talked about the pandemic and this might not we don't know how long this is gonna last yeah but I felt like I saw this thing that I received an email from Selena about the kickstart 2021 and I was like whoa like we don't know how long the pandemic it is but then I got this email saying like uh, create momentum and keep it feeling more confident and inspire use this creativity and resilience resilience to set yourself up for success in 2021 I was like oh okay I want to participate on that yeah well um, Celine and I we, <laughs> the way we work is we go through we, basically, we go through that process ourselves, and then we go like, oh, wow, this will be really great for other people as well, right? So the way it works is that um, we reflect on our year, and as much as some of us might be complaining about the 2020 year, um, it has been such a productive year for me. So wow. I have not produced so many different things in a year um, since that this pandemic started. Like you mentioned, the MSC, and I was just counting that I this year I've given over, I believe, like twelve different workshops. Right? Wow! Where um, normally in a year I do about three or four, <laughs> right? And 
and I got involved in tons of projects uh, with people who are creating. Um, so it, it's been an incredible, in, incredible year. And I've been able to help a lot of people, uh, also together with uh, Selena and, and, and by myself. Um, so it's like reflecting and um, looking at, oh, wow, so if I can do all of that, right? Going back to the beginning of our conversation, hmm, what else can I do? Right? So, and that's when we're looking at 2020, um, looking at, okay, so I've done all of that. What else can I do? Right? And then we're going to project ourselves to 2021, come December. What will I be looking back at as the things that I've achieved? Right? And then taking the resilience that we have, right? We've, most of us have been locked inside or and limited in our social connections and the way we work um, and yeah. we have our fluidity has been tested in terms of okay I can't do that how can I do it now and um, so that adaptability has been tested so we've proven a lot to ourselves right and we'll be looking at that and then we're going to look at okay so if I've got all of that am I just going to put it down and just okay start over now I'm going to take all of that <laughs> and go like, okay, bring it on. Because I can, I, I can do this. What else you got? And then rather looking at what is the year going to bring me, you know, what am I going to give to 2021? Right? Oh, wow. How many people do I want to help? How many products do I want to create? How many people do I want to inspire? Whatever, whatever your, your game is, how big can you make that game, right? And the one thing that we've learned in, in, in 2020 is working in groups and communities with like-minded people, right? Which is definitely something we're gonna do again in 2021. And has created people to finish their book. Finish their book, sell their book, start new projects. Uh, consistently take action uh, in, in those projects and pull out of the resources of that community, right? So we create these little communities in these workshops and um, we have little rules in the community where nobody is doing ifs and buts and uh, shoots and coulds, right? Um, no excuses, uh, none of that stuff. You have a problem you present it to the group, and then the group contributes and supports, right? Guys, I'm stuck. Guys, I keep procrastinating on this. Guys, I don't seem to get further with this. Okay, great. And then everybody jumps in, plus the two coaches, and then we figure it out. Wow, that and sounds that's, amazing. And that's how we go into 2021, right? With that, in, <clears throat> first, we, we're going to picture right, what it is that we would like to, to happen, knowing what you can already do, mm -hmm. right? So and taking that and then building up on that success. One of my boxing coaches used to say this to me, right? So it's like if I, if I had done a beautiful combination and I connect it, then I would pause and then he would, say, he would tell me, stop standing there admiring the shot, build upon the success, bang, the shot has landed. What is the next thing that you're going to do? Right? So it's like, okay, I have all this resilience. What is the next thing that I'm going to do? I'm not going to just sit here and look at it and go, oh, yeah, this is beautiful. Right? Now I'm going to acknowledge it. Great. I can do all of that. What else? Let's go. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the kickstart. That's the kickstart. So like, that's the kickstart. Right? Yeah, I'm we, being the one that doing and stare like, oh, whoa. <laughs> so I love that you like. <laughs> yes, right. It's like we, we can sit back and, 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 and admire uh, ourselves for a little bit, right? You're like, oh, well done. Yeah, like, but aren't you curious to see what else you can do? Indeed. 
because saying that you remind me when I was playing squash and like I, some shots and I was playing and I did a shot that I loved and I was like, wow. And I just stop and I'm appreciating the shot while the other person's running and doing another thing. And suddenly, oh, okay, <laughs> that's that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it was yeah. like, I had to get out of it. Okay, you did it. Great. You, but you standing there and watching it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and, that, and, that's, and that's what we talk about in terms of momentum. It's like you've one great shot. Great. Next great shot. Right? And like, okay, that one was successful. Next one that's successful rather than sitting back and, and just going like, okay, yay. <laughs> oh, lovely. So this is going to be third... Sunday, 3rd of January, right? Yep, straight into and, the year, 3rd of January. And it's a free online workshop. Yep. And uh, now the time, that's very important. One to three, but European time. Because I did one that I arrived halfway through the workshop, oh, one hour later. <laughs> okay, so yes. I will see you then. Yeah. I will join that. If people that want to join, they should just go to my profile in my bio, click on there, register. It's free. So. Great. So they go to, yeah, they will have from the conversation, right? From the, uh, from the post able. that we, the post that we put it up that has your. Yeah, should be. Um, see if I can no I can't put it in here or at least I don't know how to do that so okay um, but um, but if they go to we, my bio they should see they my bio can. in the in the in the live right so they can go there okay yeah thank you oh thank you lots of love thank you guys thank you I lost you there for a second, Carol. Uh, thank you for all the love, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mitra. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. JP, you're an hour late.
Merry Christmas.